You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Always enjoy our chats with James McConey at around about this time Sunday afternoons. How are you, mate? I'm all right, mate. Great to hear Sapreet Singh on your show. Love him. And also another another great sports star who's, who hails from Manurewa. Rewa hard, they say. His parents live there, I think. Um, his parents do. So you know, after you've got Scott Dixon, John Walker, you've got... I've just been watching Bundy Aki. Um, they're all coming out of Rewa. What a hotbed. What a hotbed yeah. of sport. Incredible. Hey, now, did you see uh, Billy Vunapola's tackle that he was red-carded for for England against Ireland this morning? Yeah, I was just watching it on Sky right now, and I'm yeah, I'm shocked. It's actually a, it's pretty bad, that one. And I don't care if players are bending over. Some of the worst high shots I've ever seen. Jason Deeth, for any Warriors fans, getting smashed by Rodney Howe, broke his jaw. He was falling, but Rodney Howe knew exactly what, he's, what he was doing. There's a famous high shot as well. You know, the Wigan versus Castleford, and the commentator go, goes, That was diabolical! Get him walking! Get, get him off the field! Get him off the field! Get him off the field! Get him walking! <laughs> yeah. so, that, so you're putting that in the, same, in the same kind of general category as that, are you? Well, this is Billy, Billy Vinipola. That is a tough, tough shoulder to get. Closed arm as well, if you know what I'm talking about. Arm tucked, so it's all shoulder to the head of the Irish prop. But I think Owen Farrell's is just as bad. And what appalls me is that George Moala did a tip tackle. Yes, he dropped the player, but not on his head. On his side, his shoulder um, made contact with the ground. So that is, it's in the law. It's not, it's not ideal, and you do get a proper ban. Well, I'd much rather get dropped like that, like George Moala did to that Canadian while George was playing for Tonga. He ended up with five weeks in the end. It was 10, downgraded to five. I'd much rather that happen to me than a shoulder from Owen Farrell or B- Billy Vunipola. I can't understand how the independent panel saw fit to change that to just a yellow. I, 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 I don't understand. What were they watching? Yeah, that's it. And even the, the, like I said, it doesn't matter if a player, he didn't actually dip that much. You could see the only contact that Farrell could have made was with the head of, um, of that Welshman. And to not get any punishment, and George Moala gets five weeks, you can see there's a lot of All Blacks and other players around the world saying, what is this? Is it just political? Is it just tier one versus tier two? Or is it racist? And it's fair that they ask that question. Mm, agree. That side of the Rugby World Cup draws looking looking quite soft, isn't it? England being beaten twenty nine ten by Ireland, uh, Australia. Uh, what did you make? What did you make of Eddie Jones's parting shots during the week as he jumped on the plane with his hat on? He, yeah, he's got his Akubra on, but he is absolutely throwing his toys. If you missed that, have a listen to this. You know we're terrible. Just tell us we're terrible. I can feel this negativity coming out. I can't. I've got to wash myself off, boys. I've got to wash myself off because it's just sticking, sticking to me. Thanks for the worst press conference I've ever had in World Rugby. Worst press conference. Well done, boys. That is the worst I've ever seen. Can we have one? Worst I've ever seen. Forget it, boys. All right, good luck. You're going to give yourself an uppercut, boys. Give yourself an uppercut. He is. He's losing the plot. I actually can't wait to get to France just to see Eddie Jones. That's kind of my most exciting thing, <laughs> just to see how he's going. Um, I'm going there for NZR Plus, by the way, the new content channel. There's an app out, and it's pretty good. Like The, the content I've already managed to, to conjure up and, and release, so I'm, I'm excited about that. But just uh, uh, for the meantime, I'm like, OK, All well, Blacks, I know you've got a World Cup to win, but I need to see Eddie because he's lost the plot. He's chosen all those young guys, and... I think he's chosen young players, Piney, just to hide the fact that he, he's got no chance, if you know what I mean. He's, it's yeah. an excuse. It's an excuse. I, 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 I wondered that too, and I thought, no, that can't be right. There's no way he'd sabotage his own country's World Cup campaign just to save a bit of face by not picking the likes of Quade Cooper and Michael Hooper and others. I, I think he has. I think he's. Okay. I think he knows that that's that's the ultimate card that you can play. Like we're building, you just wait and see, wait and see, and it's it's an insurance policy. He's such a politician, Eddie. Um, I, I do love him because he's he's a passionate rugby man. But I think I think he's um, 
done the wrong thing here because really you're, he's just going fishing and hoping that you know if he gets three good players or say he gets four all-time greats out of this group of young players, he'll say it's a, a success. But that's not really the point. He has sabotaged the campaign. Hey, the Black Caps lost to the UAE this morning in a T20 international. Should we be worried about this? Um, I always think T20 is just a lottery anyway. So winning winning a T20 against the top nation is like winning, say, a game against Novak Djokovic in tennis. And yeah. then if you win a one day, you, it's winning a set against one of those all-time greats, you know, a Nadal or a Federer. And then if you can beat them over five sets, that's a test match, right? So I, I think we're actually just doing these, playing these games to fulfil requirements and um, we're all waiting for us to play 50 over cricket. We do play England um, over five matches, and good old England have absolutely shafted us by having them as day games. So it's like um, 11.30 till whatever, 5 in the morning. So it's not quite the same as a, as a good day nighter that you can wake up and watch most of it. But um, look, uh, I, I think with cricket, T20, Piney, it's a lottery. I reckon a gentle Annie on spin cycle with a bat sellotape to it could possibly score 120 <laughs> with just as much chance in spin cycle. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, just before you go, World Cup final tonight, we're going to have a new winner uh, of the Women's World Cup. Neither England or Spain have won it before. Who do you reckon uh, lifts that trophy around midnight tonight, New Zealand time? Well, people probably care more about who you reckon. So who do you reckon? I've got England, uh, but I've got absolutely no confidence that that'll be the uh, the case. I think it's a cracking final and prospect. Spain could win; yeah. they've got some great players. I, I just I'm hoping for like a three-two. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm almost exactly the same as you. I think Lauren James returning for England is massive. Um, makes some favourites. I tried to choose a tournament eleven. Had four English players in there: the goalie Mary Earps, Lucy Bronze, and Rachel Daly, the fullbacks, and Lauren Hemp up front. So, you know, there's, there's this quality all around. But then if Spain get it right, I prefer Spain style. And if they can get their teenage star, Selma Pabaluelio, to play more minutes, then they could do it. What a player. And they all hate their coach too. <laughs> it just adds an interesting layer, doesn't it? Exactly. I know. It doesn't. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, the, the pride of Spain, this is like, this, it means so much. They've come a long way. We used to, the football fans used to play Spain and it was very close. You know, it was... We used to draw with them. But obviously those big countries, when they finally start to care and invest in women's football, and by the way, maybe we should mention the 11.1 million Aussies who watched um, the Matildas play England in that semi-final. It's 43% of Australia's population watched that semi- semi-final. Well, in New Zealand, I can tell you 1.5 million fans watched a football ferns game. That's 30% of our population. Not bad. Not bad, but what has to happen now, including your club, Tawa, and my club, Te and whoever whoever's out there has got a football club, we need to capitalise now and have spring leagues, summer leagues for girls, for boys, no boots required, just sneakers, shin pads optional. You just have to let... We've got to capitalise on the, on the groundswell, on the buzz. And so say all of us. Thanks, mate. Great to chat as always, James. James Bacconi, Craig Goes Wild, Kiwi Football Fix, uh, Alternative Commentary Collective, and NZR Plus. Great to hear. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.